Hello there. My name's Toadie, but that's not really important right now. Welcome to a quarter of the Mushroom King Dope that you've probably never seen before. Uh, do you see that shop over there? It belongs to what will become one of the Mushroom Kingdom's most reluctant anti-heroes, Jeffrey the Gamer Ghoul. D don't worry if you've never heard of it before. Nobody has, unless they're a part of the MKGC. Oh, sorry, that's short for Mushroom Kingdom's gaming community. Anyway, Jeffrey's story starts on a typical sunny day in the Mushroom Kingdom. Mail call! Are you the one they call Jeffrey, the gamer ghoul? I am not. I am H4Y9, the master's personal assistant. However, if you have any mail addressed to the gamer ghoul, I am authorized to accept it on his behalf. Very well. Another letter duly delivered. A postman's job is never done. What's all the noise? It was the postman. You received a letter. A letter? From whom? Uh, according to the insignia on the back of the envelope, it appears to be from Bowser, King of the Koopas. B B bowser What what could he possibly want with me? What does it say? It appears the seven Koopalings have been kidnapped by a rogue magic Koopa. And apparently all of Bowser's resources are tied up in a new scheme to capture the princess and to take over the Mushroom Kingdom. But wh what does this have to do with me? To put it simply, he's asking for your help. Uh, out of the question. He promises a very generous reward if you agree. Re reward? What kind of generous reward? <laughs> I would imagine he means a monetary reward, sir. Indeed. Where do I start? He's provided you with a map to the Magic Koopa's Keep. It appears to be located somewhere in the Forgotten Forest. Sub died later. I don't get it. According to this map, the Magic Koopa's Keep should be around here somewhere. But I've been going around in circles for hours, and the only thing I've come across are some disgruntled dry bones. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest. Of most excellent fancy. Bravo! Bravo! What a curious champion Bowser has sent. If you were looking for my home, you need only use your eyes, for it was right here all along, invisible, yet right in front of you. No matter, you are my prisoner now. Three days later. So you've finally woken up. I hadn't realized that sleeping spell was so potent. You've been unconscious for three days, and in that time, I've come to learn a lot about you, gamer ghoul. So your store owner, who specializes in video games, what a waste of time. A waste of time? The Maya brothers are plumbers, yet you don't hear anyone calling their vocation a waste of time. You, on the other hand, lock people away in prison cells because you're too afraid to face them yourself. Afraid, am I? I'll tell you what. You convinced me that playing video games isn't a waste of time, and I might unlock that cell of yours. Deal, but I don't know where to begin. How about the beginning? Well, where are we? And and what is that? This is the Tech 9000, a supercomputer that not only helps me run this keep by acting as security, but will also help me take over the Mushroom Kingdom. I've brought you here to text Den because you'll need a visual aid in convincing me to let you go. Tech will be able to emulate anything that you'll need, so begin my dancing monkey. The best place to start would be an argument as to why video games are important, followed by some examples of noteworthy video games. Ah, this should be good. Ahem. <clears throat> Since the beginning of time, man uh, and Koopa uh, have sought ways to distract themselves from the stresses and strains of everyday life. This is known as escapism. Examples include reading literature, listening to music, watching television, and even playing video games. That's all good and well, but it doesn't take away from the fact that playing video games is a complete waste of time. You're glued to one spot for hours when you could be doing something productive. 
You don't get anything from it, unlike reading and even watching television, which can give you knowledge and help form your opinion. While you make a valid point, let's compare watching a show on the telly to uh, playing video games. When you're watching a program, what are you doing? You're usually stationary and your hands are free. When you're playing a video game, on the other hand, you're typically required to do more than sit and stare. You're required to focus on the task at hand and both of your hands are busy with the controller, mouse, keyboard, or whatever accessory the game requires. Your mind is active as you act, react, and plan ahead, depending on the scenario, all of which helps sharpen your cognitive and problem-solving skills. A good example of this would be THE arcade game that put Nintendo on the map, Donkey Kong, one of the earliest examples of the platforming genre, I might add. Donkey Kong tells the story of a dangerous ape who kidnaps a beautiful woman by the name of Pauline and has taken her to a construction site where her boyfriend, Mario, happens to work. The player takes on the role of everybody's favorite do-gooder, Mario, as he scales the construction site in hot pursuit. The game requires the player to exhibit patience and skill in order to traverse four unique stages by jumping between gaps, over approaching enemies and objects, and let's not forget that this is a Mario game. As such, you have to have power-ups, and in this game they give you a doozy. You can certainly wreak havoc with a giant hammer. So that's where Mario's hammer came from. I always wondered about that. Uh, nevertheless, what are you really getting out of all of this? Jumping over obstacles, destroying enemies with power-ups. You just described every video game I've ever seen. While there may be similarities, uh, the gameplay is rarely exactly the same in any two games. Uh, let's compare Donkey Kong to its sequel, Donkey Kong Jr. Uh, in this game, the character takes on the role of Donkey Kong's son. Now wait a minute. You're telling me that you aren't playing as Mario in this video game? Oh, you certainly heard me correctly. In fact, not only is Mario not the hero in this game, he's the villain. You see, this takes place directly after the events of Donkey Kong. So, Mario has captured the Kong and placed him in a cage, and now Donkey Kong Jr. is trying to rescue his father. So what you're telling me is that Mario is holding this beast in a cell and is trying to stop its spawn from releasing it. Doesn't sound very villainous to me. Well, I suppose when you put it that way. Uh, but he is releasing animals to attack Donkey Kong Jr. And he's putting obstacles in his way. Hmm. Well, that sounds a little better. But he still sounds like he makes a mediocre antagonist at best. As I was saying, while Donkey Kong Jr. is similar to its predecessor, it's unique in its gameplay and mechanics. The player is made to avoid enemies and obstacles by climbing vines, chains, and ropes. You can even knock down pieces of fruits to destroy enemy. While in the original Donkey Kong, your goal for every level was simply to reach Pauline. That's not the case in Donkey Kong Jr. In Donkey Kong Jr., you have to reach the key that's located next to Donkey Kong's cage, at least in the first three levels. In the final level, Donkey Kong Jr. must push all six keys I don't know where he gets six keys from, because there's only four levels. Well, anyways, he needs to push six keys into the locks on Donkey Kong's cage in order to free his father. I would also like to add that, much like the original game, the game isn't over after beating it. No, once you've viewed the final cutscene, the player is taken back to the first level with increased difficulty. You know, Gamer Ghoul, I have to admit, that this has been several minutes of my life that I'm never going to get back. If I wanted to deal with the Kong, I would simply fly over to their country. I wouldn't waste my time in an arcade or in front of a television screen for that matter. Now, that's not the point that I was trying to make, and you know it. Besides, you haven't let me finish. That's where you're wrong, ghoul. You had your chance. You had your chance, and you blew it. But don't worry. You'll be free. You'll be free one of these days. And you'll be able to join my army of dry bones. <laughs> Great 
routines and salutations, I am H4Y9. I am here to remind you that if you are interested in playing the video games mentioned in today's video, you can always find them available on Nintendo's eShop and Virtual Console. If you're under the age of 18, you will need your parents' permission to place your purchase. Thank you.